For six decades, Willie Nelson has marched to the beat of his own guitar. Along the way, he released nearly 200 albums, earned seven Grammys, and a place in the Country Music Hall of Fame. Aren't you lonely? But in 1960, Willie was just a dirt poor Texas boy who found his way to the music mecca of Nashville. Is that a teardrop in the corner? There he wrote hit song after hit song for other performers. I am crazy. Like crazy for Patsy Cline. Crazy for feeling so I knew someday. But Willie's unique rhythm, singing slightly before or behind the beat, didn't sync with Nashville's slick mainstream sound. It was only when he returned to Texas and really let his hair down that he found his own voice. Love is like a dying ember. In 1975, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain earned Willie his first number one spot on the charts. The hits kept coming. On the road again. On the road again won a Grammy in 1980. But you were always on my mind. And always on my mind you spent 21 on weeks on the Billboard charts. Willie's free spirit was instrumental in shaping the outlaw country genre. Well, now, it's all going to fun. now, 32 years after the duet Poncho and Lefty, Willie is teaming up again with longtime friend Merle Haggard for their new studio album, Django and Jimmy. Willie Nelson's new memoir, It's a Long Story, covers her songs and much more. He joins us now in Studio 57. Welcome, Willie Hugh Nelson. Thank you. So what, what are you thinking when you look at that tape? I wonder how I made it this far. <laughs> I was going to suggest a lot of living. No, you just celebrated your 82nd birthday last week. How does Willie Nelson celebrate 82 years? What'd you do? I forgot what I did. <laughs> well, the one thing that's, that struck out to me, you said, I want to write a truthful memoir otherwise I wouldn't write it at all so you talk about the women you talk about the drugs you talk about the stuff that didn't work let's talk with marijuana because I was saying to you I've never smoked marijuana so I'm curious about what it does for you and you you, you describe it as an old friend who has never betrayed you I think you know it, it calms me down mm -hmm. and I used to drink a lot I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes uh, now I don't mm -hmm. uh, so I think Substituting pot for cigarettes and alcohol. It was a smart choice. What do you say about pot? My love affair with pot became a long term marriage. It was by far my, the smoothest of all my marriages. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out so far. <laughs> it's worked out so far. Why be so open about your private life, about your failed marriages and everything? Oh, I don't know. I'm not ashamed of anything. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't think my life has been that much better or worse than a lot of the other people that I know. You said even as a little kid, music was always in your blood. You started out writing poetry, mm -hmm. and that sort of got you started. Mm -hmm. But music, you said to this day, you, you're on the road, I think, 150 nights a year. You don't see that as a burden. You see that as a blessing. Oh, I get so much out of playing music mm -hmm. that uh, there's a huge reward just playing music. Yeah. And to be able to play for a big crowd who enjoys what you're doing, mm -hmm. And who pay a lot of money to drive a lot of miles to come see you. So I think there's a, a great energy exchange that takes place when anybody, when any artist is performing for an audience. You also talk in the book about your, uh, your battles with the IRS. Mm -hmm. What happened? Oh, I had some bad advice and uh, took the advice and wound up owing on the IRS a lot of money. and uh, 32 million, they 30, said. I think that's what it was. <laughs> and round figures, I believe you're right. And so what were you required to do, to pay it back? Or did they make a deal? Or, or what did you learn from all we that? We had a big meeting in Austin and a big table, a little bit, I don't know, 20 or 30 people there. And we all said, How many people? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a funny story. I bet you were the only guy without a suit. <laughs> I was, yeah. Willie, it's a funny story because you said you decided to take on the IRS. And people said to you, that's crazy. You can't do that. Everyone was advising me to, to go bankrupt, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and avoid the debt. Mm -hmm. And avoid the debt. But also it meant avoiding all other debts that you had mm -hmm. and cheating all those people out there that you owed money to mm -hmm. besides the IRS. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do that. You think the whole country will legalize marijuana? Yeah. How long? Five years, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the way it's going now, and it may, you know, it may uh, be quicker than that. Uh, once 
all the so-called smart people see the money, see the bottom line, look at Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and say, wait a minute, we're losing out. And not everybody supports the legalization of marijuana. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about the use of it because it's now become so widespread in states where it's legal for recreational use? Do you worry about underage children? Well, uh, underage children shouldn't be putting anything in their lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, pot smoke or cigarette smoke or any other kind of smoke if they can help it it's not good uh, for their lungs and probably not good in t for their brains you know let their brains get a little smarter you know before they start trying things and uh, I think that's why you need to be an adult to make those decisions you know the argument always against it was that it somehow leads to other kinds of addictions yeah, whether it's cocaine I, or heroin. I would be the first to say that's wrong you know I think it uh, eliminates other addictions for me and I can only speak for myself are you writing songs all the time are you I write a lot no. uh, I've got you know a new album coming right. out with uh, uh, me and Merle Haggard mm -hmm. and uh, we've wrote a lot of the songs in together there. or you, he wrote some and you wrote some he wrote some and I wrote some is there one song that you'd like to you know Everybody to remember. Is there one that means more to you than anything else? That I wrote or recorded? Yeah, wrote, 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 recorded. That oh, you I wrote. Know, I think recorded. Crazy is probably one of the uh, better ones that I've written. You know, Patsy Klein recorded it and mm -hmm. it became a, a huge hit. And he confirms in the book, guys, that he did smoke marijuana at the White House. I got to get. I oh, got on, on the roof. Yeah. On, on the, the roof, roof of the White House. I heard I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you were a guest of Jimmy Carter, right? Yes, yeah. I was. How'd you get up on the roof? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, there was a friend of his that knocked on the door and said, Hey, Willie, you want to go to the room? I want to go to the room. Yeah. And I said, Why not? Any regrets, Mr. Nelson? No. No. <laughs> I think that's a great <laughs> idea. You can sit here at 82 and say no regrets. No. Yeah. You lived yeah. a very full it's life. Great to have you here. Thank you, Charlie. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much. Great, Willie Nelson. The name of the book is called It's a Long Story. It's available wherever you like to buy your new books. And Willie's new album with Merrill Haggard that he just talked about, Django and Jimmy, that's coming out June 2nd. I time to get it. I was in a... In a uh,